Hey, so today I am here with some of our team. These are some of the people that sit around the table with me each week as we go through our Bible passage and kind of start preparing the message. So we've got Alex, Christian, and Lee. If you don't know, they all serve on staff with us here at 419, and they're going to help as we discuss this last chapter of the Book of Ruth and kind of end out on the series. Before we jump into the last chapter, we've got to quickly review what's taken place. Let's go. Because if we don't review it, we won't understand what's going on. So, Lee, what happens in chapter one? Heartbreak. All the men die. All the men die. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. All the men die. Who's left? Naomi and Ruth. Naomi and Ruth. What happens in chapter two, Christian? Uh, just so happens. Yep. Um, yeah. Just so happens and that she has to go work in the field and then she gets noticed. But just so happens Ruth goes into the field, gets noticed by who? Boaz. Boaz. And Boaz has some money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. A lot of money. Well, he has something, but he is extra and generous. He is very generous, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and so Ruth is set up for some success. Um, we also find out that Boaz is related to Naomi, which mm -hmm. means he's set up in a perfect position to kind of help them out. Mm -hmm. yeah. What happens in chapter three, Alex? Well, Naomi tells Ruth to go do something. <laughs> he, she said, go do something because we're trying to win. So help us win. Naomi gives some interesting advice, but mm -hmm. ends up being good advice, yes. sort of. Mm -hmm. um, well, Ruth made a good advice. Yeah. That's if you don't know, <laughs> Ruth goes and basically proposes that Boaz proposes yeah. to her. Um, she says, you're set up to be our guardian redeemer. We talked about this last week, that there were certain family members that were related and were... God had written into um, his law that they were to take care of those other family members who were in need. Mm -hmm. And Ruth and Naomi were related in a certain way to Boaz, and he was set up to actually care for them. And as it ended, Boaz said, I would love to, but what? But there's somebody well, closer. There's somebody closer. I got to go talk to this other dude. And at the end of the chapter, we find Naomi and Ruth are just waiting, yep, yep. and that's kind of how that scene ends. And so we pick yep. up in chapter four. And all throughout this book, what we're seeing is this amazing story of God um, and how he's working in the lives of ordinary people doing amazing things that yep. we don't even, there's no big miracles. Mm -hmm. It's just God's hand of providence yep. working all through. Mm -hmm. And what I've wanted us to see is the character of God, but also to understand that God has invited us to be a part of this, a similar type of a story. Yeah. Yeah. And we can be a part of God's story and God's story is a better story. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're going through today, God's got a better story. So I'm gonna have each person read a passage and then they're gonna give a point that's answering the question of just how can we be a part of a better story? So we're gonna start with Lee. I think yeah. you've got the first few verses. So Ruth chapter four. Yep, I'm gonna go one through four. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat down there, just as the guardian redeemer he had mentioned came along. Boaz said, Come over here, my friend, and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took ten of the elders to the town and said, Sit here. And so they did. Then he said to the guardian redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here, and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, do so. But if you will not, tell me, so I will know. For no one has the right to do it except you, and I am next in line. I will redeem it, he said. So in this chapter, how can we see how we can be a part of the better story? And it's just simply to trust God's providence. Um, Boaz is going to somebody else and saying, hey, this is yours. And that other person could have said, yeah, I'll redeem it and take this thing that Boaz wanted. But yeah. Boaz knew that God had a plan. And so yeah. he trusted that God's hand was on this. So I see, I mean, you, chapter two, what was the providence? You said it a minute ago. Um, just so happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This has another one that's just like that. Um, at verse one, it says... So he went to sit down and just then it's like, so just then this guy kind of walked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like they called this meeting. It was one of these things. Again, I've got to find this guy. It's not like they lived in a huge town, mm -hmm. yeah. but still it's another God providence. Right. Just kind of so happened um, that that's what took place. Now we've got always have people that have either not been here for a while with us or new with us. What's that word providence? What's that mean? Like what's that word providence mean? Like any providing or provision, like I'm making room for you, making way for you? Sort of, but what's it talk mean in that, the passage of this scripture? That God had a plan the whole time? God had a plan, yeah, the whole time, that God's 
God's plan is going to happen. Yeah. Um, it's going to take place. Yep. Sometimes and, we screw it up. Sometimes we take little detours, but it's always there. Yeah. yeah. It's this weird thing that God can use all of our circumstances, good, bad, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to fulfill his promises. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's one of the things that really confuse people about God mm -hmm. and they don't know how, what to do with that. <laughs> Because if we believe God's in control of everything, then am I just a, like a puppet on a string? And it's yeah. scripture says that that's not the case. Yeah. So it's there's just some things about God that are so big and amazing that they're really hard to yeah. grasp. Um, I think this is true. We don't usually see the providence, the hand of God, unless we look backwards. Yeah. yeah. Um, do any of you guys have a story where you didn't think about it until now that you look backward, but you can think, man, this moment tied into this moment, mm -hmm. tied into this moment, tied into this moment. Does any of you guys have a, a time like that you want to share? I, I definitely do. Yeah. I know. I know it's hard to believe I make mistakes and I mess up. I know how hard it is to believe that. But I messed up a few times or two in my life, especially in college. Like nobody noticed, like they put me out of college. Like I was that crazy, I was that wild. And I didn't know like taking the time off and not being in college and then being able to come back, how everything, like the place I'm at right now, how that started being orchestrated then. Like I just took me, messed up in college, and then leaving for leaving college for a while, coming back to come into, hey, I got my relationships right with Christ. I got I met mentors and then they provided me to be go in church. And then they started me leading in church and volunteering in church to me. Now I'm doing something I always want to do. Like I would have never thought I'd be in ministry, but that time away from messing up, God provided and opened up those doors for me to be where I am right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's those like little domino moments. Mm -hmm. um, we a lot of times call them coincidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are actual just literal coincidences, but there's a lot more of God just is orchestrating. And he may not be the one that pushed over the first domino, mm -hmm. but he orchestrates even in the middle. I've, I've known people that there's been tragedy and chaos happens in their life. And they can look back at that really hard moment. I mean, you got kicked out of school. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can look back at that hard moment and realize, I'm not saying God was the one that got me kicked out of school. He did. It was me. That was but all God me. is a redeemer. <laughs> who can take even our all of our circumstances and he can work his will 100%. even in the yeah. middle of that. Yep. And we see that all throughout this God's For providence. Sure. Um, last week, I you all know, sometimes we'll talk Hebrew, Greek words, but we don't, I don't use them a lot from stage. So I'm like, I don't know if people care about this stuff. And somebody's like, I love those things. I'm like, I'm not going to do it a lot, but there's the word in here. He calls this man friend. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a Hebrew word that I think is funny sounding. Um, and it's Poloni Almoni. <laughs> Poloni Almoni. You got to say it. Somebody say it. Poloni Almoni. Poloni Almoni. Yeah, that's like the first name. Phony Baloney. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like phony Baloney. Poloni. Poloni Almoni. I'm going to start calling y'all Poloni Almoni. Hey, hey Poloni <laughs> no, Almoni. No, no, don't call it that because here's, here's what this name literally kind of translates mm -hmm. to. Mr. No Name. My bad, oh. I will not call y'all that. <laughs> 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 it's tough. <laughs> or so-and-so. So-and-so. Like, you ever told this story and you couldn't remember the guy's name? Like, so-and-so said, so -so, yeah. oh. Poloni alone. <laughs> Poloni alone. <laughs> I already can't say it. <laughs> but that's what the... the this guy doesn't even get remembered for his name. That's tough. <laughs> He's just yeah, my little one to say so and so. <laughs> you, that's tough. Mr. So and so. That's where they're at. Man. Um, and then other just Bible study type things. So they're at this gate, um, and really that's kind of like the entry point to the town. And we're like, what in the world does that mean? Mm -hmm. It's where a lot of times they would have these these type of meetings. Mm -hmm. Like we've got this business transaction. Think about like you going to the maybe a courthouse or you like when you're signing papers for your mortgage, you have a meeting space. Mm -hmm. So this was a common place for people to conduct this type of business, these mm -hmm. type of meetings. So they're at the gate and there's people around to see it. Okay. Um, so there's people that are witnessing what's about to take place. Um, so all that's taking place all in these first few verses, but we, the big thing <laughs> we see is how can we, what did you say? Trust God's providence, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. first point, if you're taking points, you want to be a part of a better story, trust God's providence. Mm -hmm. He is in control. Yeah. Second one, Christian, you got the second one. Yes. Yeah, so we got Ruth 4, 5 through 10. And it says, then Boaz said, on the day you buy the land from Naomi, you will acquire Ruth the Moabite, the dead man's widow, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. At this, the guardian redeemer said, then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it. 
Now, in earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off his sandal and gave it to the other. And this was the method of legalizing transactions in Israel. So the guardian redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself. And he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, today you are witnesses that I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Malon. Hope I said those right. You did. I hope well, also. I mean, I don't know. You said it. <laughs> Maybe. Rough. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabite, Malon's widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from his hometown. Today you are my witnesses. And what's cool here, talking about, you know, how can you be a part of a better story is uh, what it looks like we pulled out of here is like taking God honoring risks, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of falls right after what Lee just went through. It's just like that providence and just trusting when I step out into this, I'm going to, you know, I, I went to the guy and I said, Hey, you have this opportunity to marry Ruth. And he took that risk and he's like, I'm gonna put it in God's hands. Yeah. yeah so Boaz takes a big risk here. So here's, why this was kind of a risk. Okay. Um, first off, it costs a lot of money. He's going to rebuy this land. Mm -hmm. There's money that transfers. Yes. Yeah. He's repurchasing land. But then he's not just repurchasing land for like, this is my land now. If he has a child mm -hmm. with Ruth, the land actually goes to that, eventually goes to that child. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that, that those are just risks. Those are concerns. Yeah. And um, it's, he's also remember Ruth is a Moabite. Even though she's come into the yeah. fold of Naomi's family and the, the people of God, she's still someone that has a lot of baggage. She was a, a widow. She's from a foreign yeah. land. There's a lot of risk that's being taken here, but it's that's the truth. Yeah. It's God honoring risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's God honoring risk. And I think that's what we have to learn to take sometimes mm -hmm. is yeah. just some God honoring risks. Um, I, I don't know if any of y'all are taking a God honoring risk and what that looks like, but yeah. Well, so, um, very interesting. Um, I've been in ministry before, but, uh, kind of stepped away from that for a while through some, uh, just situations. COVID kind of knocked a lot of that out, but, uh, whenever this opportunity was starting to show itself, I was fighting real hard and I was like, God, I don't know about it. I don't know about it. And I'm not saying this is the key to having a baby but we've been praying for a while no, no 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 i promise i promise we've been praying for a while for a little while to to have a baby and i've seen this actually i didn't think of this until we were done uh until i'd already talked to you but i've had three or four different youth pastors in my life that couldn't have a kid and then once they actually submitted and stepped into ministry god blessed them that way uh, and that's kind of the same thing that happened here as as we i kind of stopped arguing with god and was like all right if this is what you want we'll walk towards it that's when we found out we were having a kid. Yeah. So it's like that risk of leaving what I've built up and know now into stepping into this yeah. and just trusting that he's going to take care of everything. The other thing, because we read those two passages separately. I think it's funny. So Boaz comes in and basically says, there's this land that's for sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Little bait and slip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to buy this land? And the guy, if we just stopped where you read, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do this. Yeah, Let's deal. go. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, uh, there's this other woman that it comes with too. So, like, like Boaz just he, he came in with a plan. I sell you this. Oh, and this. Too. <laughs> he, he got it. Man. I got it. Right he yeah. was like, "Here's my shoe." Got, got it. Ah. That's crazy. Did you just say got him? Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. That's tough. Yeah. Don't look up where the video came from. But, but what is this? Y'all, there's lots of feet and sandal stuff in this whole book. Yeah, what's up with everybody in feet? Man? Yeah, that's uh. That's Here's what I want to know: Did Boaz does he take this one shoe home, and now he just has a collection of single <laughs> shoes? Like, how does this work? Or did he like when they switch shoes? Like he had to walk with that shoe because he had a shoe. Yeah. So know. there's a lot of significance. <laughs> so this scripture about feet. So we're gonna no, it's out. not. <laughs> take God on your wrists. Yeah, it's not about the shoes and the sandals. There's a lot of significance to it. Um, there's a whole different passage about when, you know, this guardian redeemer, one of the things we said is if their brother, um, 
if his wife died and they didn't have any sons, mm -hmm. he was now to marry her. Mm -hmm. Well, if that brother would have said no, one of the things that would have happened is they take the shoe and spit in his face. This isn't the same kind of an instance here, um, but it is, it's not the most honoring thing to have to have gone through this type of thing, but it was a way that it said that they dealt with some of these transactions and things. But honestly, it's a way that, hey, I'm not stepping on your land and your things. This is, mm -hmm. this is yours now. Yeah. I'm not dealing with this. Yeah. Um, but that's a huge risk. And I think sometimes we want the fruit of big things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to see, yeah. Awesome. We want to be a part of some kind of movement. Mm -hmm. It always means you've at some point got to step out in faith yeah. Yeah. and take a risk. Yeah. And Boaz, we can just slide right by this, mm -hmm. but this is him taking a risk. Yeah. Um, what does love often require? It requires like sacrifice, right? Yeah. 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 It's going to require sacrifice. He get out of those comfort zones. Get out of the comfort zones. And take your shoe off. I mean, sometimes you got to take your shoe off. <laughs> take your shoe off. That's right. Sometimes you got to. Matter of fact, you got my shoe No, 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 no. So we say take your shoe off and throw it on stage right now? No, don't. Chill. <laughs> Chill. No, who did that? Chill. George Bush, when he was president, somebody threw a shoe at him. Boy, that boy was ducking too, boy. <laughs> boy, he didn't get hit by that shoe. Yeah. That came quick. Yeah. That is not what I'm saying. <laughs> keep I'm your just shoes on. I'm saying keep your shoes on, but don't be willing to just hold everything back yeah. just for convenience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, convenience is not what God has called us to. He's called us not to complacency. Yep. He's given us a calling that's going to a lot of times lead us to someplace that might feel uncomfortable. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so again, it's not just, don't just take risks. Don't be risky. Take mm -hmm. God honoring yeah. risks. That's good. And that's what he's doing here. All right. Third one, Alex, this is your reading. All right. So we got, I got Ruth chapter four, verse nine through 12. And it says, then the elders and all the people at the gate said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who was coming to your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the family of Israel. May you have standing in, in Ephraim. Ephraim, how you said it? Sure. Yep. Ephraim. <laughs> <laughs> and be famous in Bethlehem. Though the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman, may your family be like the rest of Perez, whom take my board to Judah. And I can see, we can see this throughout this whole, like all these chapters in Ruth. Um, the power of prayer. Yeah, They prayed a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't super long prayers, but it was prayers of blessings. And they just prayed a lot. They always prayed. And I think if we think about how we can make prayer a more intentional part of our life, we can see that it's just not a ritual, but it's a powerful way to communicate with God. Yeah. So that third point, to be a part of a better story, we should, I guess, like surround ourselves mm -hmm. with prayer. Because yeah. I know we could just read by this and not even think about it. This is a prayer. Yeah. Yeah. They're bringing God into the story. And it, like you said, it they happens the over and mm -hmm. over again in the book of Ruth, just consistently, God bless this, yep. you know, and it's just this all the time type of prayer thing, prayer moment. And they short. Yeah. Yeah, they are short. Like, yeah. they, it's people, man, don't get me started. People, they're like, hey, brother, can you pray real quick? And they start out most humble, most powerful, gracious God, on King, the people pray. our Father, and they pray 20 minutes long. And I was like, all we ask you to do is bless the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but here's, here's the truth, Alex. I think yeah. I'll, I'll pick out what you're saying and, yeah. and pull the truth out. You know, I've let, I've talked to a lot of younger Christians that are just developing uh, a habit of prayer. What's a common question you think they ask? How, How long do you pray? pray? How long do you pray? What should we probably not be doing? Timing our prayers. Timing our prayers. <laughs> I got 30 seconds left. Yeah. <laughs> Bless the grass. <laughs> <Not a place. laughs> because the truth is, some of you guys are going to be people that can just spend mm -hmm. a really long time in prayer. Uh, my mom, she can spend hours just praying to God. But then there's some people like me, I don't spend hours and hours in prayer. I don't spend, my prayers aren't really long, mm -hmm. but I don't go long without praying. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's yep. a difference there. My prayers may not be really long, but I don't go long without praying. And a lot of these prayers in this book, they're not real long, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot that goes on between where you see God bless this, God do this. Mm -hmm. And it's consistently happening mm -hmm. in there. Prayer is so important. If you want to be a part of a better story, Right. You better find yourself someone that can pray for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Learn how to pray. Yeah. Because um, this isn't Ruth or Boaz or any of them praying. It's it's community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do we invite people to do at the end of every service? 
I have people at the front to do what? Come, Come pray with you. Come pray. Come pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of y'all need some people to pray for you. You ain't lying. And there's people that are just waiting, saying, I'm here to be mm -hmm. your community, yeah. your support to pray. So today at the end of service, man, if you need someone to, to pray for you, come down. Don't yeah. just leave again. Let somebody pray a prayer of blessing over you. Yeah. It is so important. So important, so important. All right, I got this next passage here, 13 through 15. It says, so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Um, there's some really first thing. Verse 13, like sums up so much mm -hmm. of the, the blessing and the hope in just one verse. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like in chapter one, there's like two sentences and everybody dies basically. <laughs> and now at the end, one it's sentence. one sentence and they made love and they gave birth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this sentence here actually is one of the ways, reasons I think that in last chapter that they didn't actually make love because otherwise I probably would have said it because it says it right here. Mm -hmm. Um, but there is something I think that's important here to be a part of a, God, a better story. We have to remember that God is able because mm -hmm. here's what this is, is the Lord enabled her to conceive. Yeah. The Lord enabled her to conceive. Yeah. There's two things that it go at the beginning of this book that were heartbreak. There was no food. Mm -hmm. There was no family. Yeah. There's only two times when it says the Lord provided something. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Lord brought back food to Bethlehem. Lord That's provided. Good. Come on. The Lord enabled her to be pregnant. The Lord provided. Yeah. God yeah. wants to provide for our biggest needs. Man. He is more than able. Um, Ephesians 2.20, it says, my God is more than able. I can't remember the whole entire verse. Um, he reads his bow. I do. <laughs> but it's my God is able to meet all of your... I don't know, but it's God is more than able to do more than you can imagine is the biggest thing that I'm yeah. trying to say here. Yeah. And some of us are just in a season where we don't know where he's at. Mm. Yeah. Um, while you're waiting, he's, he's, he's still working. Yeah. That's, That's a lyric cool. of a song. I think it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. That song. Even. Yeah. Even though I'm see it you working, yeah. you never stop. What the never stop way. working. <laughs> you hear yes. my guitar. <laughs> but he's still working. So if you're in a yeah. season right now where you're just waiting, it doesn't mean God's not working. Yeah. yeah. Um, he good. is still working. He meets our biggest and yeah. greatest needs. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, what's the question that then pops up? In saying that, what's the question that would pop up in our brain? If I say God is able. Then why hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. If God is able, then why hasn't he? It just goes back to trusting in God's providence. And that's really, really hard if you've been praying for something yeah. for a really long time and you feel like God is continuing to say no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. God's answers sometimes are <laughs> confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do still live in a broken world of pain. I'm, I never want to be the guy that says everything's going to be roses and sunshine and lollipops. I've yeah. said it. In this series, I think some people are born in pain, live in pain, die in pain. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean in the middle of that pain, they can't still have hope yeah, and right. peace and rest that they have Jesus all the way through. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's not just about the the pain that we, we get to move that aside and one day rest in the glory of being with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying that everything's going to go perfectly well here. If God is able, why doesn't he just do it? Mm -hmm. Depends on what you're asking. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, cause he is able to set us all free. He did it through Jesus yeah. mm -hmm. and it's not to dismiss or discredit anyone that's in pain, hurt, sorrow. We've all been in those moments. Yeah. And when we look to God and go, God, it's God. Why? Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all, y'all ever been there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God, why? Yeah. And God can handle that question. Sometimes yeah. we act like we shouldn't question that. God can handle that question. Absolutely. He's big enough to handle that. Yeah, read through a bunch of Psalms and a lot yeah. of them are, God, where are you? God, right. why? Yeah. If God thought it was important enough that he left it in the book, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. he's showing us, I can handle that. And just keep acknowledging that I'm a part of yeah. your story. Yeah. Even in the middle, know that I am able. Mm. You may not see the finish of it like we get to see here. It's so great that we get this kind of happy ending. Yeah. yeah. 
You may not see that exact happy ending, but we got to still believe God is always able. Yep. He's always able. I, I'm really bothered. I can't remember that passage of scripture. But <laughs> what? The one you were just trying to quote? <laughs> I was trying. Ephesians 2 something. I think it's 2 Ephesians 2. Man, I think I know it, but like if I say it and I mess it up just like you did, they're going to think neither one of us read the Bible. Well, it's, it's Ephesians 2.20, <laughs> I think. All right. It's in the Bible. It is. And kind of concluding this whole entire book here. Um, I'll read the last couple of verses. The other verses are just some more of this lineage of what's going on. But it says, Naomi took the child in her arms. So the mother-in-law who has lost her two sons, when she came back, wanted to be called bitter, yeah. had nothing to her name, yeah. had no food, had no family, now takes a baby into her arms, land restored, man, food back. And the women living there said, Naomi has a son, and they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Um, this whole book has, a lot of it's been talking about this providence of God. And I said at the beginning, sometimes the providence of God is best seen looking backwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the funny thing, like about the Hebrew language, we read left to right. Do you know which way they read? Right to left. Right to left. It's like they read backwards yeah. almost. Sometimes we have to look backwards to see how awesome God is. Yeah. Matthew, I think, yeah, Matthew yeah. chapter one. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter one has the genealogy of who? Jesus. 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 Guess who's in the genealogy of Jesus? Boaz, Ruth. Boaz and Ruth. Yeah. This woman who had nothing, mm -hmm. who was a foreigner, who yeah. was hopeless, who was just saying, okay, I'll just be a servant and go pick up scraps. She was the person that's picked up scraps and she is now listed in Matthew 1, verse 5. It says, Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Mm -hmm. And it eventually leads to Jesus. Yep. Yeah. She is in the lineage of Jesus. She's engrafted and ingrained in the line of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That, and she never even, she never got to see that. Yeah. Know. Ruth never got to see that. Mm -hmm. She never knew that she was even great grandparent of David. Like the mighty king. Mm. These are all things that she would have never known. We just get the benefit of being able to look backwards. Yeah. yeah. Who knows what God's doing in any of y'all's lives, in any of our lives. We may not even get to experience the fullness of it. It may be our grandkids. Like, man, I'm so glad. I don't know what they're going to call you when you're a grandparent. I know you're still young. So glad Papa Christian. <laughs> Papa Christian. <laughs> Papa Christian. <laughs> Love Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm so glad Big Daddy Al loves Big Daddy Jesus. Al. Oh. Mark just called me Big Daddy Al. <laughs> but you it's never know what, like, you yeah. you might be laying a foundation. Like, you'll never yeah. get to see it all the way through, but God's providence is doing something that mm -hmm. you're written in the story mm -hmm. that he's writing. Yeah. Yep. That's so cool. Uh, we want to be a part of a better story. We've got to continue to believe that God is always good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God always has a plan. Yes. 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 God always has a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter one, I wrote this. Chapter one, heartbreak, loss, pain. Mm -hmm. Chapter two, there's working, there's waiting, there's serving. Chapter three, there's an initiation. There's also a big level of trust. But in chapter four, there's redemption Come on. and rejoicing. Come on. Yes. And I don't know what chapter y'all might be in. You might be in heartbreak. You might be in just a waiting. You might be in a, I'm just a servant right now. You might be rejoicing. Whatever chapter you're in, make sure you're engrafted into the story mm -hmm. of all stories yeah yep. the story of god yep. the story of jesus um, a lot of people this is think this is just a what, love story right <laughs> a love story between who boaz and ruth yeah yeah everybody makes it a love story of boaz and ruth and there's a lot of love going on there mm -hmm. it is true but this is just a small love story and a bigger love story yeah, yeah. yes and it's the love story that we're all included mm -hmm. invited to be a part of. It's the story of Jesus. Um, any last thoughts kind of about this whole book before we kind of close the close the chapter on this chapter and end this series? I just thought it was cool that all of all through Ruth, the book of Ruth, they kept calling her the Moabite. But in Matthew, when they're looking back on the lineage, it's just Ruth. Ruth. Yes. Yeah. They, they, like he took that dirty part in their mm -hmm. mind of titles away and it's just her name. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really good. There might be titles that other people call you that yeah. you might always have gone by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But once you're in God's family, yeah, He gives you new name, mm -hmm. new purpose, right. new everything. Mm -hmm. God is good. Um, any other last one, last thought, final thought before we kind of wrap it up? I just want all y'all understand. God wants to take us no matter where we are. Heartbreak. Yeah. 
But he wants to give us hope. Yeah. 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 Hope, hope, hope. And he has a name. His name is Jesus. It's our message. It's the one thing we talk about every single week here. Yeah. You are invited to be a part of God's family. And it's by the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We are all sinners. We are all foreigners. Mm -hmm. We all don't belong to it. We, we don't belong to the family, but yeah. we are invited into the family. And the only way that we're invited and included is because of the work of the cross. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. um, and he invites us in. He's our guardian redeemer. He covers us. He pays the biggest mm -hmm. price for us. All the things, Boaz is not a direct a correlation to who God is. Neither is Ruth, but we see throughout there the hand of the providence of yeah, God. Yeah. And I want to invite you, if you've never given your life to Christ, maybe you need to get back to being right with him. Um, today is your day. Like, Don't leave this place without taking that step. He's paid the price already for you. You just have to walk in to that new hope.